Yeah, I just got this Muncie 4 speed. I really didn't want to buy it because I have the Super T10 sitting on the shelf in the other garage for a future project. But the price was so cheap, I just had to buy it. So what I'm going to do with this is rebuild it and sell it. And this is a, a, night, a 70 to 74 Muncie M20. It's got the 26 spline input shaft and a large uh, uh, output shaft. Yeah, I'm also going to clean that uh, shifter and the bell housing up and sell it. For that other transmission, I have a bell housing and I got a brand new uh, shifter for it. Yeah, so I won't need to save any of this stuff. Yeah, I got the bell housing all cleaned up. It looks a lot better now. Yeah, I also took this uh, shifter all apart and cleaned it up and greased it and put it back together. Okay, this switch on the transmission on the third and fourth uh, gear shifter, it's for uh, some of the cars in the early 70s had electric valve on the uh, vacuum line that goes to the distributor, so the vacuum advance only works in third and fourth gear, and it was emissions related is why they did that. And anytime you're rebuilding one, any transmission, you should look over all the holes in the case and make sure there's no stripped out threads. And you should fix it before you sell it if there is any bad ones. Yeah, I buy uh, rebuilt automatic transmissions all the time, and, and there's holes that are stripped out, and they never even fixed them. Okay, and what these grooves mean on the input shaft, that means what ratio the transmission is. There's two different ratios on these Muncie transmissions. Two grooves means it's an M20 wide ratio transmission. That means it's a, got a 256 first gear. These transmissions are better for a car that has higher gears in the rear end because then it's easier to take off. If it had one groove on here, it'd be a close ratio M21 transmission. Those have a 220 first gear. Those are better for racing. And on the Borg Warner Super T10s, they have about five different ratios. I actually like them better. They're a stronger transmission than these Muncie's. Hey, so anytime you're buying one of these transmissions, you want to pull a side cover off and look at all the engagement teeth on the gears. And how you do that is you put this in a second gear and then the, sh uh, the shift fork clears the case so you can pull this cover off. So then what you're going to do is compare the teeth on fourth gear and first gear because those always have the least amount of wear to uh, second and third gear those normally are the worst ones and make sure all the teeth are about the same length if they aren't what will happen is it will pop out of gear when you let off the gas but these gears they actually make them real cheap now you can buy them for about 75 bucks a piece and the reason there's some rust in here is this guy left this thing sitting outside but it will all clean up yeah I only paid 150 for the transmission and the rebuild kit I think is $117 and that comes with all new bearings, seals, the bushing in the rear and the gaskets and the needle bearings and the synchronizers. Yeah I just got the rebuild kit and here's the information this company sells all uh, manual transmission stuff. Okay so the next step to rebuilding one of these is to remove the tail housing and to do that the first thing you gotta do is take the speedometer gear out. Yeah, and I normally replace this piece that the speedometer gear goes into. If you don't, about half the time it'll, it'll leak oil up the speedometer cable and you'll have one drop of oil on the floor under the dash every once in a while. And sometimes this gear also gets a groove worn in it. Yeah, so next this pin has to get knocked out of here on the reverse uh, shifter. Then you can pull the shifter out where it's disengaged. Then the tail housing comes off. Yeah, this thing sure has a lot of rust on it. And also when you pull a tail housing off, the reverse gear comes out of there. So next I'm going to have to get this gear off of here. And you also have to take this nut off of here, off the input shaft. Yeah, then I was able to take the bearing out of the front. And normally you would knock the pin out of here from the cluster gear, but somehow I gotta get figure out how to get this gear off here that's rusted on. 
Then this uh, the cluster gear drops down the main shaft, comes out of the case. Yeah, normally this comes apart easy. This gear just slides off here, but I'm able to line that up. And then I can knock the shaft out of the cluster gear, and then all the needle bearings will come out. And this gear is going to drop down, and the main shaft will come out. Okay, so I got the cluster gear out, the reverse gear, and here's some of the needle bearings that came out of it and the main shaft. So now maybe I can work on getting that gear off of there. Yeah, so I got third and fourth gear off. There's just a snap ring inside you got to take off, and then that comes off. So now I still got to work on getting this reverse gear off of there. Yeah, so I got the reverse gear off. I mean the reverse gear and the speedometer uh, drive gear off in the press. It came apart pretty easy. Next, the snap ring here. And you got to open that up and then this bearing, uh, it comes out of the bearing. This aluminum part comes off. Okay, then there's another uh, snap ring that holds this bearing on. I'm going to have to wire wheel this first. Then I can get the bearing on, off and then the rest of it apart. Okay, and I was able to get that bearing off with just two pry bars. I didn't have to put it in the press. Yeah, I also had to press this piece off. Most Normally these transmissions come apart much easier than this because they're not all rusted like this one. Yeah, so now I got everything off the main shaft. So next I'm going to clean the main shaft up and then start cleaning one piece up at a time and putting it back on. Yeah, so I got the main shaft all cleaned up. Yeah, these transmissions, you can get pretty good money out of them, so there's no reason to leave them outside. Okay, so next we're going to put second gear back on. We want to put a little bit of grease on the inside of that before we put it on. Yeah, so next you want to put the slider back on. And the kit comes with new springs and new these pieces. The springs just go down in here, and those little pieces go in those grooves. And you want to put grease on this when you put it together. Yeah, so next the spacer goes on and then a uh, uh, first gear. Hey, I got a uh, first gear on. And again, you grease the inside of the gear when you put that on. Yeah, so now I got the bearing on there and that holds everything together. And the groove faces inward on the bearing. Hey, I just got a third gear and the synchronizer on. So next the slider goes on. I just got to clean it up put the springs and the, those little pieces in there and then put it together. Okay, I got that slider in and the snap ring on it. When you put these snap rings on, you should take a punch and go around it and make sure it went down in the groove good. Yeah, so now the input shaft goes on. That's also fourth gear. And inside, a needle bearing goes in there and that's the cage for it. And it comes with new bearings. Okay, so I got the main shaft all back together. So now I guess I need to clean this uh, case up. Okay, I got the uh, case all cleaned up. And when you're doing this, you always, always want to make sure that there's no silicone down in any, any of these holes where you can break the case when you go to tighten the bolts down if there is. So next step is to uh, grease all the uh, bearings on the cluster gear and put them back in. Okay, so how this goes is the spacer goes in the middle and there's one washer up against it. And there's one row of needle bearings, and another washer, another row of needle bearings in the washer. I think there's 128 needle bearings you got to put back in here, in here. And you should use real heavy grease to try and hold that together. Okay, so I got all the needle bearings in the one side. It's actually not very hard to do that. The first time you do one, you might say a few bad words. Okay, so once you have all the bearings in the cluster gear, what you want to do is grease these two washers up and put them in here. And then you put the cluster gear in there where it's all the way on the bottom without the shaft in it. Okay, so the cluster gear is sitting in there now. So now you want to put this reverse gear in here, just temporary to hold the washer and everything in place. Okay, so now I'm ready to put the main shaft in it. And after I get the main shaft in it, I'll stand it straight up and take this gear back out and the washer will stay in there for the, this reverse gear what, when I put that uh, plate on, back on. Okay, so I got the main shaft uh, through the case. So now 
I can put this pin back in for the cluster gear. Okay, when you put the shaft back to the cluster gear, you got to make sure this is on this end and that slot's facing that way. That hits against that other uh, piece that goes between the tail housing. Okay, you drive this shaft in until it's just flush with the case, that flat part on it. Okay, so now I got the front bearing in it, and it takes this special nut that goes on there. And the part where the wrench goes towards the inside. And also this nut's got left hand threads on it. And also when you put this nut on it, you want to center punch that right near that hole there so that it can't come off. Yeah, so next I'm going to put that piece on. And I like to use this gasket sealer. And the kit also came with brand new uh, French locks. Make sure when you do this that you don't put washers on the head of the bolts. I did that like 25 years ago and the transmission wouldn't go on because they hung over the edge just a tiny little bit. Okay, to put the rest of the transmission together, you do it with standing up like this. It makes it easier. You can set it on a jack stand if that's all you have. Yeah, I did make one mistake. That speedometer drive gear shouldn't be on there yet. Yeah, the reverse gear has to go on first, but I forgot about it because it's in the other garage uh, soaked in evapo rust. So I'm going to have to pull that back off. Yeah, so next I'm going to clean this adapter plate up and the tail housing. This reverse shifter's got to come out of here. Yeah, I just got the speedometer uh, drive gear off. And I use this puller, it worked real easy like that. Yes, yeah, so I got these pieces cleaned up. So next I'm going to put the seal in for the reverse uh, shifter and the, the shifter and the ball and the spring in there. Okay, so I got the reverse shifter in there, and it's all the way uh, slid over right now. Yes, yeah, so I got the reverse gear all cleaned up, and it slides on there nice and easy now. And that little piece, and you grease that up so it stays. And you put this in reverse when you go to put the case back on. Then when the gear is sitting all the way down, it lines up right, and then you can push it in and it'll engage. Okay, so when you press this bushing in it, you need something in the inside to hold it the right uh, inside diameter. So I have this other yoke. It's the same yoke as like a Turbo 400. And what I did before is I put the old bushing on there, and then I'll put electrical tape around that so the bushing doesn't come apart. Then you slide the new bushing on and then press it in there. Once I get my lathe working, I'll make something to do these. Yeah, then you put the tape on there like that. The reason is these bushings, I don't know if you can see that, they're hooked together in the middle. So end up splitting apart the old one if you don't do that. Yeah, so I ended up, I had to take this old bearing and weld the two halves together because it kept splitting on me. And then it worked perfect to push this in. Yeah, if you don't have anything in the center and you push this in here, the yoke won't fit back in. Yeah, when you go to put this plate on, this snap ring has to be spread apart until it just goes over the bearing. And then when it goes down the rest of the way, it'll snap in the groove. Another way of doing it is to put the bearing in here first, then slide it together. I like to do it this way because this, when you put this bearing on it holds everything together when you're working on it. Hey, I got the seal in here. Anytime I put a seal in something I put grease on it so when you put it back together it doesn't get damaged. Yeah, another thing you want to do is put some grease on these bushings on the reverse gear. Okay, so the next step to doing this is to put the tail housing on. Okay, I got the tail housing on. And when you're put, putting it on, you've got to push this in, and it's got to be in reverse when you do that. And the best way to see if it's lined up is to look in the end with a flashlight, and you can make sure that it actually engages with the gear. Yeah, so now there's this little pin that goes through here and holds us in the right spot. Yeah, and I always take and put a tiny little bit of gasket sealer over this uh, shaft that goes through the cluster gear right before I put the transmission in the car because sometimes they leak a tiny little bit of oil from there. 
Yeah, so the next piece that goes in is the piece the uh, speedometer gear goes in. Yeah, that just goes right there. Okay, so that piece is in. So the next piece to clean up is a side cover and then put that on and that's it. Yeah, so I got all the parts cleaned up. So now I can start putting it back together. Yeah, and what these two pieces do is it makes it so you can't put it in two gears at once if something were to break in the shifter linkage. Hey, and with these two shifter shafts, the one that's got this piece on it that's machined in here goes on the switch. Hey, and before this cover goes on, you want to make sure this shift fork's in second gear. And you also want to put the transmission in second gear. And all you have to do is just slide that over. Then the cover goes on easy. Yeah, so now it's all done. All I have to do to it is just wipe it off real good and then uh, build a crate to put it in so I can ship it. And normally these transmissions take about 8 hours to rebuild. This one took longer because of all the rust. It took probably about 10 hours.